Hello everyone, today I'm back and today I have a bit of a different video to show you what I've been doing these past couple of months I know I went kind of silent at, at like, when was it? November or September? I don't know when the last fucking Stories to Update dropped Reason being, you know, Stories to finish its life cycle of updates with the buffed up fatalities and it was honestly kind of boring and I just didn't really have I didn't have that that need and that feel to grind it the fight just became just a bunch of bloated numbers and it wasn't fun to do so at that point I kind of didn't know what to get and what to do for my monster hunter fix you know rise was still somewhat like luster in terms of events and I just how do I put it I wanted a different experience and Story to just the life cycle got me kind of bored towards the end honestly the last couple of updates were fine but it was too repetitive for me and in that time i was still wondering what i could do because i still wanted to play monster hunter the issue was just what would i play and i heard that there was this insane monster hunter world mod that changed the game as a whole with a lot of quality of life changes, different weapon gameplay and considering how fun world is for me, of course I knew just, I, I had to try it and see the vision that the mod team had to this game to Monster Hunter World and enter Monster Hunter World Ice which is a complete rework of Monster Hunter World Iceborne with a myriad of changes to make the game feel much more comfortable honestly and the game flow is even better than regular Iceborne. The mod was made by a ton of community members, which have the goal of increasing the enjoyment of World and Iceborne to the fullest. They reworked the game completely. This isn't a mod that adds a new layered armor or a monster, it actually changes the way you play the game. And it actually gives you a refined Iceborne experience, in my honest opinion. One of the best things about the mod that I found while I was playing is that you can actually just convert your Iceborne save file to the ice save file, uh, so you don't have to start all over again and grind the gear, you don't need to start a new save file. I did anyway, I wanted the complete experience, but it's an option. And it's also possible to play with multiplayer. I know some people like to play multiplayer. I'm more of a solo guy, but for those of you who prefer multiplayer, you can even play this mod with other people who also have the mod, so you can continue your Monster Hunter co-op experience. This mod has an unbelievable amount of changes, but I'll just, I'll just outline a couple that are more important and more attractive in my opinion so in that case we'll start with the changes to the weapons and their gameplay ice made significant changes to a variety of weapons by adding either some simple yet attractive features or just adding completely new playstyles to some of these weapons for example the great sword and the gun lance received a completely different playstyle that gives more diversity to the weapon and then you have some other weapons for example lance which just had more of a simple buff in the motion value to assist with their fun but weak moveset in this case lance lance is a fun weapon to play it's just that it's weak, you know. I guess you could say it's fine because of the defense, but still, if you wanna be efficient, you will not really use a lance, which is unfortunate. So ice in this case provided the buff to most of Lance's power moves. Well, Red Sword and Gun Lance actually received insane buffs, and they have different lifestyles. For example, the Great Sword has this combo system, so you are not just focused on TCS all the time through Charge Slash. If anyone doesn't know what that is, which is the core way of playing Great Sword for some time now. And the Gun Lance actually had its shelling styles morphed into one gigantic style called the Omni Lance. So, as you can see, there are 
plenty of changes to the weapons in their game style. Some more than others, of course, and some of them don't have any changes yet, but this is a, a work in progress, so... I do believe that they will have some changes in the future. As for me, I've been exclusively using the charge play for my playthrough, which actually didn't have that many changes, but the few that were made are amazing and godlike. I'll start with the biggest change for me, which is related to the Amped Sword state. In this case, the Amped Sword state increases its duration by one, sa by one second, in fact, I was gonna say one minute, but no, one second for a, su a successful sword hit. This means that you're just using the sword and shield mode and you have your sword amped. You won't have to charge your sword nearly as much and you'll improve the flow of the fights much more. You don't have to constantly buff it. I think it's every 45 seconds. So in this instance, you can have longer periods of the sword state. You can also directly go to element discharge 2 from charging your files. And the file consumption will synchronize with the explosion, which means you won't lose all your files bef before the attacks are successfully connected. This is quite good. I found myself having some instances where I would attempt to use an SAD and the files would go to waste because I would be hit just a bit more, but my files were already consumed. Additionally, they also reverted the Espor nerf to impact files meaning they cannot compete with power element files. This is also quite good as it keeps non-elemental charge blades competitive against element. Besides the uh, changes above, some motion values were also increased to keep the moves useful, of course, so you can have a better experience of your entire kit. But despite all of this, charge blade was one of the least strange weapons, but a few differences it has from vanilla make it much more fun and smooth to play. Even Bogans add plenty of changes to the way the ammo works for more utility and variety. Most weapons have some quality of life changes changed to them and provided, but some weapons like the dual blades and the sword and shield didn't have any changes at all yet, but the devs are focused on making sure the balance is kept. So, this is still a work in progress, as I mentioned before, meaning we can still see some interesting changes for them in the future. This is also important because under Discord they are constantly discussing these changes and it's good because it's input we can put directly. If anyone feels strongly about some changes to dual blades, they can go there, give the suggestions and maybe they'll implement it. I know they were talking about Arc Demon mode being a bit more useful in World it's just a placeholder until we get to demon mode again, so these changes can be provided by us as community members. The other biggest change to ice, which is my personal favorite in fact, it's not even the weapon rebalancing, is the rework of the clutch claw. Everyone knows that the clutch claw was so centralizing in base game, you had wax weakness exploit working around it and it was necessary. Mandatory, in fact, for most monsters to soften their parts and doing proper damage to them. The clagger, which is the drooling animation from monsters, was also annoying as it interrupted the flow of fights way too much because it made the monsters stand still and drool for us to tenderize them. Now that there's no need to tenderize, they also took out a specific action from the monster. Ice actually made the clutch pool almost obsolete. It increased the flow fights without the necessary and frustrating may I add process of constantly tenderizing monster parts every couple of minutes. Most seed zones from monsters were actually buffed to advert the necessity of having to tenderize all the time, which allows you to just stra jump straight into the action instead of having, you know, these scripted battles which always started by wall bangs into tenderizing every couple of minutes and you had to tenderize the part you were targeting. With ice, this isn't a factor anymore, as the hit some modifier from tenderizing was also changed. It was to 0.05 instead of 0.25, so in this case it will assure you don't get dramatic damage increases from tenderizing or even change the way that weakness exploit works. So tough parts will stay tough and most parts are good now, so you're free to attack without the need to tenderize. 
You can still tenderize for a slight damage increase, but it's not necessary at all. It's just a small increase, which won't give you that much returning damage. Also, monsters don't quagger anymore, which means that the intense fights won't be stopped by the drool animation, which for me is actually amazing. It can be seen as a nerf, but in my honest opinion, the fights feel much more satisfying without these sudden stops for you to tenderize. Yeah, you could get a heal in while they were drooling, but it just keeps the flow of combat much better. Every weapon tenderizing attack also tenderizes on the first attack if you still choose to tenderize, and also drops linger ammo. So this means they unified the tenderizing attacks as well, which for me is also good. I think the distinction between light and heavy tenderizing was just unnecessary and also as a last bonus to this rework weakness exploit works as in this world meaning you don't need to tenderize for the extra affinity boost it goes 15 30 50 if i'm remembering correctly so weakness exploit is working as intended now a small point related to this whole rework of skills as I was mentioning it's a weakness exploit but there's other skills such as elementless and maximum maximum might or max might I think it's maximum might but some of these skills alongside some others were changed or reverted to base world for example elementless was 10% in world a 10% damage increase in ice power it was 5% knights back to 10 so it gives you more merit in using elementless and other skills like Max Might. So these these skills being changed means you have a bigger pool of skills to, to, to choose from, which is always good. Diversity is good. Decorations also had a big rework made to them. In Ice, you'll receive decorations as fixed drops throughout the story to ease the RNG aspect of decorations. Most decoration drops are related to weapons that allow you to use the weapons potential mighty bow capacity boost guard up alongside other decorations or effects drops meaning you can use weapons like the bow and charge blade to their full potential without needing to farm hours in the hopes that these decorations will drop some people played throughout the entire story without having a mighty bow decoration so this allows you to use the weapons as intended the decoration drop rate was also changed to make sure you don't need to farm hours for rare decorations like critic boost or witness exploit. Since I did a new playthrough of the game for the full experience, I decided to do the high rank end game such as Arc Tempered Elders. I needed to farm some gear to prepare for these fights and I had every decoration I wanted such as 3 witness exploit, 3 crit boost, multiple crit eye and attack boost echoes before entering Iceborne. All without specifically farming for decos with no other goal in mind. This means that just while I was getting my my gear, my gems to build my sets, I got all the decorations I needed. This made sure I had a much better time building sets and having fun trying different stuff without being locked out by the horrible decoration system we had in Vanilla World and Iceborne. Something else I want to mention are the general quality of life features added, which were amazing as they make the experience much smoother. And actually they cut down a lot on the padding of the original game, which in this case would increase your playtime by a ton. I mean, just farming decorations alone was a slog. I'll just outline a couple for you to have a better idea of some quality of life changes that they made. So firstly, you have the botanic garden which allows you to add multiple boosters at once so no need to only provide one per quest and the limit was 20 now i do believe it was 9 or 10 in bay in vanilla but right now you can just add 20 which which is always more than the maximum amount of items you can cultivate which means you can only go to the farm when it's full this cuts down the attention you have to pay to the farm by a ton. This is actually quite good because in vanilla I was always visiting the farm just to make sure that my boosters were properly in place but now with this method I don't need to care at all about the farm. I just go there pick up my stuff refresh the boosters and I'm done until the next cycle. Another change is how you can exchange 
RNG Augment Stream Stone, that in order to reduce the RNG Fiesta that was high rank end game. This was ridiculous, everyone would just spend hours farming Relish the Moment, which was a Tempered Devil Draw quest to get Stream Stones. And I went hours without getting a Stream Stone for Dual Blades. So just having this factor in, how you can change them to a 2 to 1 ratio, I do believe. But just having the option to exchange them at the other Melder is amazing. It made everything so much easier for me to farm. I could still be in high rank, honestly, if this option wasn't available. Something else which is also quite important to me was the Master Rank farm from Sharish Folder, the moment you finish the S Prawn story, to Rinner, Rinner Gigante. The Master Rank progress was actually doubled to cut down the necessary farm to arrive to Ruiner and unlocking the guiding lands for good. This means that you could just do a couple of quests that provided good master rank points and just in a couple of hours you could get there. I didn't even take this into account, I just did all my farming, which I wanted. Get some gear, perhaps try to to some guiding lands and I got to master rank 99 super quickly so this is also useful because of the power creep nature we had post Chara so you can just cut through that quite quickly and grab the gear you want without having to farm for master rank for hours but speaking of guiding lands the guiding lands was also streamlined quite a bit, the progress is much smoother and faster to level up these areas. This means you don't need to spend your time killing 100 coral pukipukis to get the guiding lands to level 7. I've also not noticed much of a decline in the other areas when you're leveling up a specific area. This means that you don't need to be concerned as much, at least with the other areas leveling down if you are going for some specific materials or increasing a specific area. There's even a lift at the beginning of Astera, so you don't need to run through all the lifts all the time, wasting minutes and minutes of your playthrough or hunt, and you can also skip cutscenes. So these are just some of the quality of life changes that they outlined. They're the most important to me, or most of them are the most important but it just shows how they had this goal of making the gameplay as smooth as possible and that was the focus of the mod. Also I want to put a small disclaimer, there have uh, also been some nerfs to some armor pieces such as Fatalis and AT Valkana or Valkana Gamma. Those armor pieces that top your skills and way too many decoration slots, giving a big power creep to us the hunters more than necessary for the current level of difficulty we have in the game so they decided to revamp them a bit take off some some slots for the armor but you'll still be able to fit in most of the most of the decorations you want and honestly the fatalis gear was ridiculous it ran out of good skills to fit in before completing the set so personally i don't mind this especially considering they might have plans for the future Fatalis might not be the finale, so who knows what we may get to get even stronger. Which means that the goal of the Ice mod is contrary to the Iceborne experience which had Fatalis as the final boss, which means that within that context it was fine to have the Fatalis gear be as it was, but it's not like this in this mod. So that's just a heads up. Lastly, I quickly wanted to mention the use of mods with Ice. Now, gameplay mods cannot be used, or they shouldn't, they might be an issue with ISIS files, but as far as cosmetic mods go, you're free to go. For example, I use the mental remover, the light pillars for the drops of the monsters, layered weapons, layered armor, those are all fine with ice. This means that you can just keep the style we had in vanilla ice form. This is pretty good for me, in fact, I hate mantles so being able to use metal remover here is honestly amazing so I don't need to have my cool ass character with 
a black mantle on top that's that's not what you're going for when you're doing all the layered armor so in this case they're also easy to install because i says it's a native pc folder it's just like you are installing the mods in vanilla world those are most of the changes i wanted to talk about you can notice there's a big emphasis on making the game much smoother in its gameplay which is actually the goal of the developers for this mod I'd rather have these changes, you know, in terms of quality, instead of just adding more monsters or gear. I do believe in quality over quantity, and I think that refining and smoothing out the gameplay of Ice is the best course of action for the mod, and is actually what I wanted the most. Since this is a work in progress, there will be many more updates in the future. Be it more weapon balances, which I fully believe they will keep on doing, more quality of life, or even maybe additional content, maybe layered armor, armor in general, weapons, new quests, who knows. I actually wanted to make this video to highlight some of these awesome changes the mod made to one of my favorite games of all time. And hopefully, I managed to convey how the developer team for Ice mainly get sucked back to Monster Hunter World in a way I didn't think it was possible before, in fact. And this mod made Monster Hunter World Iceborne the definite Iceborne experience for me. I'll make sure to try and leave a link to their Discord in the description. The more the merrier, in this case, they listen to everyone if they have good suggestions, so if there's some cool ideas you have for weapon balances or quality of life, Feel free to drop them there in the Discord and perhaps they'll be used. Hopefully you enjoyed the video as it took me some time to make. No, <laughs> I wasn't used to recording anymore. But now with Muscle Hunter Rise coming to PC next week in fact, in less than a week, I'll try my best to upload more content. You know, Rise is a bit of a hard and cold experience for me. but. I played the demo on PC and I don't know, it made me excited to play it on PC. So hopefully I'll have more content and we'll see what we can do with that game. But anyway, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll catch you next time. Peace.